long as we can look back, it's thrown in its lot with us. Marijuana has been associated with human camps as far back into the Paleolithic age as we can look. And that's very interesting. That plant, its destiny and human destiny are very intertwined. And there are a few plants in the world that have been as useful to human beings. It provides an edible seed, uh, an edible oil that can be pressed out of the seed, a, a very important fiber in uh, world commerce, a medicine which has been very prominent in Europe and uh, America over the years, and finally a psychoactive drug that's used as a recreational drug by millions of people. That's a, that's a pretty powerful way for one plant to provide for human needs. But in modern times, to merely be in the presence of this plant is a criminal offence. Millions have been and continue to be arrested. The longest and strongest fibre in the plant kingdom, cannabis sativa, commonly called hemp, has been essential to world commerce for thousands of years. Before the mid-1800s, most ships were rigged with hemp rope and hemp sails. A 44-gun warship, like America's old Ironsides, took over 60 tonnes of hemp rigging, including an anchor cable over two feet in circumference. Also, the oakum that sealed the ship's boards and the sailors' clothing were made of hemp as were the uniforms of soldiers and flags. The wagons of pioneer days were covered in hemp canvas. In fact, the word canvas comes from the word cannabis, which is found in ancient Sumerian and Babylonian languages 6,000 years ago. America's founding fathers, including George Washington, were keen growers of hemp, and Thomas Jefferson was probably the first hemp activist. Realising hemp's value to the prosperity and defence of the nation, he encouraged farmers to grow hemp instead of tobacco. Today's activists rally in the thousands at annual hemp harvest festivals throughout the Western world. They make some pretty big and enthusiastic claims. Hemp could totally replace trees as far as making paper, all paper, from fine stationery to press board, build houses from it. We could stop cutting down trees the day hemp's made legal for paper. It can replace all petroleum as far as fuel, electricity, nuclear energy. How about a hemp hemp array? Hemp hemp! Hemp hemp! Hemp hemp! All right, all right, let's make them up out there. Of course it's possible that some of these activists might have an ulterior motive. But nevertheless, their claims warrant further investigation. Hemp has been the major paper-making material for most of the time since paper was discovered in China around the time of Christ. This first paper ever to be printed on in about AD 770 is 100% hemp. By the 16th century, hemp was the material of choice for European paper makers. They made it into the finest and longest lasting paper ever made, including the Gutenberg and King James Bibles and many other famous works. America's Declaration of Independence was also first printed on hemp paper. Most paper of this period was made from recycled hemp canvas and old rags made from various fibres. For hundreds of millions of us today, paper is a way of life. The world consumes hundreds of thousands of tonnes of paper each year, and to meet this demand, hundreds of thousands of acres of forest are cut down each year. It's a worldwide crisis. In southeastern Australia, vast areas of old growth forests are being chipped and bought by Japanese companies like Harris Dye Shower. Eugene Collins is a forester turned activist. Most of these forests take in the vicinity of 150 years to uh, mature and to, to provide habitat for all the uh, arboreals that require the hollows and things like that in them. 
This, this operation will be operating on uh, about somewhere between 40 and 80 years, which is about half of what it takes to, for these uh, forests to regenerate to their full maturity. This is basically a resource grab by an industry that's in trouble. The whole operation is a biological disaster and should be stopped immediately. There's no need to be flattening these forests. We could be doing it with, other, with alternative fibres. Hemp and uh, canaf are just two of them. Mommy, mommy, tell me about the trees And tell me again about those fish that swam the seas And why aren't they here for you and me? Why can't we live in harmony? John Stahl runs a hand paper making and printing business in Northern California. He has found that hemp stalks produce the best fine quality art paper. Wood pulp is used for paper making not because it's suitable, simply because it's cheap. And it's a byproduct of uh, the whole logging industry. But the uh, available cellulose is something like 30%. It's really not very good and it has to be um, processed with all kinds of toxic chemicals. Since the invention of the wood paper process around the turn of the century, paper quality has deteriorated, and so has the environment. The water that comes out of the pulp plant, out of the pulp process, has large quantities of chemicals that are potentially toxic to marine organisms that live in the bay. Those chemicals include dioxins, they include chloroform, and a whole suite of other chlorinated organic compounds. Over 2,000 have been identified. Hemp, on the other hand, is, is somewhere in, in, around 77% cellulose and very few impurities, and it really is an ideal material for paper making. Realizing the problems associated with wood pulp paper, the Dutch government has launched a major research project involving eight different research institutes to study hemp's potential as a fiber crop for paper and other uses. I hope that this um, research will finally uh, produce uh, a process where we can use uh, uh, hemp to make uh, fibers that can be used for paper and probably also other products in such a way that we will have a complete uh, clean process, an energy efficient uh, process that causes very little uh, pollution and that also will prevent yeah, the cutting down of trees uh, somewhere else in the world. Hemp is one crop that looks promising because it is, a, it is a plant that is pretty resistant to a lot of diseases and it grows well in the Netherlands. It can be used without using pesticides and it doesn't need very special requirements with respect to soil nutrients. It needs some fertilizer but not uh, that much. Normally uh, hemp grows the best in some warmer climates than the type of climate that we have in the Netherlands but even in the Netherlands hemp is growing pretty fast. 